the Ben Simmons trade, I guess we could just roll right yeah, into that. Let's do it. Yeah. So there is a world report that this is coming closer to a deal. That a lot of teams are interested and a lot of teams are trying to facilitate and be that third team. So it always seems like a team is locked in to acquiring uh, Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. Like they're giving up equal value in the 76ers mm-hmm. aspect. And the 76ers just want to flip some of their assets to assets that fit their team better. So I was thinking, what team is giving up a near top 25 player? No one. <laughs> so I was thinking, what team is giving like a near top 40 player plus assets for Ben Simmons? And I hate that we have to bring this team up again, but I really mm-hmm. do think it's them. I think it has to be the Pacers. Yeah. I think the Pacers are involved with trading Sabonis and Levert and potentially a pick or two and getting Ben Simmons. So we could talk about that third team later, but we'll talk about what they're giving up right now. So they're giving up Sabonis, who is borderline all-star, yep. was an all-star last year, and they're giving up Levert, six man of the year. If he's a six man, we think he could win that award mm-hmm. and picks. So they're giving up a top 40, top 25-ish mm-hmm. player. You know, it was an all-star. And then you're giving up Levert and picks. So you're giving up that mm-hmm. little gap to push them to top 25 and for Ben Simmons. And for the 76ers, they just want that value because mm-hmm. Ben Simmons is not playing. So adding anything is better than nothing, right? Mm-hmm. And then for the Pacers, you get Rogden, Durante, uh, Ben Simmons. Uh, so this seems yeah. like shooters plus Ben Simmons, right? They give yeah. it a try. Sounds good. And then now we just got to figure out who that third team is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. When the when this whole Ben Simmons saga started, it was like, can we get James Harden? Can we get Dame? Oh, and it's like, oh, yeah. absolutely not happening. And then it's like, can we do CJ? Does that really make sense? It seems like all signs point to the only star level player that's going to be available for him is uh, is Sabonis, right? He's yeah. not quite of equal value, I would say, but borderline all star. If his team was a little better, he'd be an all star. He's he kind of puts up like mini Jokic type numbers. And I think a lot of teams would like to get their hands on him, hands on him to see what they can do. But I also do think, like you said, a third team might need to get involved in this because Embiid and Sabonis doesn't really make too much sense together. Uh, So this is, I think the only other team that could use Sabonis while still providing another all-star level player back to the 76ers is the Raptors, our own Raptors. I think Sabonis and Jeremy Lamb for Pascal Siakam is something the Raptors would consider. And now you have Pascal Siakam, someone who Joel Embiid loves. Mm-hmm. Combine that with a Tobias Harris. Combine that with a Levert, a Seth Curry, a Maxi. That's your starting five. That's a fun little starting five. Actually, that's your starting, that's your starting five plus your six man in Maxi. That's a fun little starting five, a nice six man. And then you got picks from the Pacers still who might blow it up, who Ben Simmons might sit. I think the 76ers are like, you know what? Let's end the saga. Let's get that started. We already talked about the Pacers and how they're kind of just like giving a shot at making Ben Simmons mini Giannis. And then for the Raptors, you have the best young power forward like that everyone wants to build around in Scotty mm-hmm. Barnes, right? Like obviously trading away someone who you want a championship, someone who is potentially the second best player on your championship run, who was all NBA recently was mm-hmm. an all-star starter recently is tough but you got to make way for the young buck who is scotty barnes who is the future of this franchise and you got to just get players that fit him better and sabonis just fits in better at the end of the day so it is going to be a sad trade to make but sabonis fits in better and i think mm-hmm. i think everyone realizes you have to build around scotty barnes yeah this this trade <laughs> i gotta tell you this trade makes just too much sense for me. So we already yeah. went over the, the fit for the Pacers. Ben Simmons on the Pacers. It's Ben Simmons plus shooters. If there's, Many honest. If I'm ranking the centers I want Ben Simmons to play with. It's like Carl Anthony uh, Towns and then like <laughs> Miles Turner. Miles Turner, right? Yeah. So, so it makes too much sense for Ben Simmons. And then with the the Sixers, the case for, I mean, the chemistry on that team would be through the roof. You got the the connection with Embiid and, and uh, Siakam. Siakam's a better shooter than Sabonis is, so he would fit better. He'd play better defense, better switch, and stuff like that. Uh, run the floor playoff and be a lot better um and then the raptor side like you said they have kind of a log jam at power forward they yeah. don't really have a center um and if they want to play center they have to either play siakam at the three who he's not his shooting isn't good enough oh. for the three same with scotty barnes so like you said there this would be building around him bringing in a guy in sabonis who i think 
in a system like that where he's the true five and he's going to be playing in the paint the whole time and not at, he has to switch out on the perimeter, I think you can get a lot out of him. So this trade makes too much sense to me. Obviously, it sucks giving up Siakam, but you're not giving him up for pennies on the dollar or dimes on the dollar or whatever. You're getting a, yeah. you're getting a, a guy who's pretty equal. All-star. Not- but the thing is why the Sixers would do this is like Pascal Simmons just way more agile, way better switching, and way better fit next to Joel Embiid. Exactly. Which is all that matters, right? Because at the end of the day, their superstar is Joel Embiid. And then the, the thing that pushes us over their edge is those Pacers picks. Because for 76 in the back of their mind, they're like, man, he didn't want to play in Philadelphia. He wanted to like force his way to LA and stuff like that. And you're going to try to get him to play in Indiana? Good luck with that. Let me try to get those picks. Let those picks be potentially, if Ben Simmons sits out, top 10, mm. top 15. And be like, okay, let me do something with these picks and Pascal and Tobias, you know, and get like a star back. But yeah, that's why those picks really push those over the edge because it's kind of a betting game. Do you bet on Simmons play or not? And then another Ben Simmons trade, speaking on playing or not playing, is the Kyrie Irving trade. That's just been thrown around throughout the whole Mm -hmm. offseason. Kyrie Irving is allowed to play in Philadelphia. He's allowed to play road games. So... People want to see that. And then people just want to see Ben Simmons play. I would love for that trade to happen because I have Kyrie Irving on my fantasy and I just wanted to play. Yeah. And a lot of us are Kyrie Irving fans. You know, hopefully that trade happens. But that trade we really can't talk about because at the end of the day, it's it's all behind the scenes and we have no information on it because it, let's be real. If Kyrie Irving told uh, Daryl Morey, I want to play in Philadelphia, I'll play with Joel Embiid. This mm-hmm. trade is done yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Kyrie Irving clearly 100%. hasn't told anyone that. So you yeah. don't know. Until he says that publicly, we know that trade's not going to happen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here so you never miss the best clips from Stretch the Floor. Hit the links in the description below to find us on all podcast platforms. And follow us on Instagram.